Thanks, Jim. And I'm going to cheat a little bit on your guide uh, here with, with what I describe. I want to talk a little bit about our big IT transformation we're okay. doing, and then I'll tell you about a project in it very quickly. Sure. Um, so uh, we set about recently to transform all of our IP app, I, IT application delivery with digital services. And you know, to Doug's point, it's all about changing the culture and about how we do everything mm. we do. Um, and we set out to um, shift away from our, our legacy behaviors. So we're moving from, at, from waterfall to agile. Uh, we're moving to being more transparent to developing in the open uh, versus a closed system where the public sees a big bang at the end. Um, and we're going to a modular API first uh, construction versus the monolithic systems we've had before. And we're going to the cloud first, trying to get uh, away from having a lot of our programs uh, hosted our vendors. Mm -hmm. okay. And finally, we're really focusing on user-centered design versus stakeholder-centered design. So moving okay. away from stakeholder-centered design, which I think is all those things are really exemplified by our eManifest program. Mm -hmm. So eManifest is a program uh, that is going to replace the paper that is in waste haulers' trucks. So when you have hazardous waste, um, there's a piece of paper that travels around with that waste from the facility that created it to its destination facility. And if a truck is on the side of the road uh, and there's something pouring out of the side of it, the only way, that, and if you can't get to that piece of paper in the truck, the only way you can figure out what's in it is to look at, at the little numbers and letters on the side and try and figure out what might be in that truck because your key sure. is sitting in the cab of that sure. truck. So we think that it's important, and Congress thought it was important, that we actually be able to tell people what's in that truck yeah. uh, and that they can look at it electronically online all the time, but that program uh, has had some challenges. It's had challenges uh, with authorization, with funding, and with getting started. And so uh, we took that as our first candidate for uh, for our new way, of, agile way of doing things. Oh, cool. Very cool. The, well, the benefits sound obvious to me. Um, how about uh, some key, uh, uh, key lessons learned along the way as you work through this program? So, um, so with this with this program, um, we were really stuck trying to get all the requirements up front. There were some technical problems that we didn't actually know how to solve, and uh, the team was stuck trying to define the answers to those problems so that we could tell a vendor, "Here's how to solve this." One of the lessons that came out of this program is, you know, let's go try something. Let's take a few technical challenges to that problem, experiment with them. Um, in an agile way and figure out what the right answer is to solve that problem. Um, we also learned very quickly, or this was one of our goals, is that we were, st we were stuck with a monolithic acquisition, right? We thought it was going to be 18 months before we could start development. Sure. So we found an agile way to get a, a development contract uh, in place with 18F and now with some of our other existing contracts. We think we'll actually be done with our development before we ever would have gotten a, an acquisition in place with a full and open. Uh, interesting. Interesting yeah. about 18F too, because we've been talking about, uh, talking to them Mm -hmm. on, a, on a radio show, too, and seeing how that program works. I know when it first came out, there was some controversy around it. Mm -hmm. um, how about some keys to success? What are some of the things that you think mm -hmm. helped you get this program going and getting the funding or whatever is necessary and really making good progress? So I think one of the, one of the real keys to success um, was shifting to a user-centered design model. We had been very focused on what our stakeholders wanted, and when we actually went out and talked to waste haulers, we discovered that what they wanted us to develop first was an API-based solution because they already had systems in place. They really wanted just to be able to talk to our system. We were focused on building out this platform where you could go in, you could enter their information, and they're like, no, no, don't do that. We want you to just give us an sure. API. So that was a really key, to, key item for our success in making that transition to what the waste haulers actually want us to deliver because they're our customers, not uh, the, the federal government. Mm -hmm. And other than the obvious safety issues, uh, are you seeing some other major benefits come out of this? Well, so eManifest e is not deployed yet. So okay. right now, the huge benefits we're seeing is it, as a model for the agency about how we can do Agile. Okay. Um, and frankly, it's a model for anyone who wants to look because we're doing development in the open. Uh, you can go to, anyone in the public can go to the website and see the Trello board where the developers are working. They can look at the code on GitHub. We'll accept code contributions from members of the public if someone actually wanted to contribute code and participate in the program. Uh, so that's a real model, and we've used that model. Uh, we use that concurrently on the Enterprise, which is another one of our big programs, and we've got several other programs that are following that model of, of testing out these services and using uh, Cloud Foundry and Cloud.gov and a bunch of things like that. Terrific. It's